Good evening, uh, everyone. Thank you very much, Ms. Myers. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the Carnegie Council for, for hosting me, um, as well as uh, my publisher, Public Affairs uh, Books. Um, uh, you know, I was approached in uh, uh, early uh, 2011, literally, I think, a couple of weeks after the uh, beginning of the revolution to about the idea of writing a book about a, a uh, a series of events that was literally just just underway, and uh, it was a bit of, a, of an issue trying to trying to come up with a uh, uh, a book proposal because we had absolutely no idea uh, how this was going to uh, going to end. But uh, I mean, I think the the, the 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 end end, as in the exit of Gaddafi, was reasonably uh, reasonably clear to me. I thought uh, the beginning was uh, at least as far as the rapprochement between the U.S. Uh, and the West and Libya was uh, uh, a period in which I had had uh, had lived uh, as a, as a junior diplomat uh, from 2004 to 2006, when a small group of us was sent to. Uh, to Tripoli to um, to basically lay the foundations for uh, for what became the embassy. Um, I, I you know I, I've spent a lot of time in the Middle East. Sometimes I wonder whether I should have studied Japanese back when I was in college because you know the the uh, the degree of uh, of changeability and uh, and uh, if I could say drama just uh, you know continues. But you know there's a uh, there's a certain something about the region and the people and the disparate disparate uh, cultures which is really quite gripping. And the more that you uh, get into it, I think the more you become passionate about it. Uh, and I've certainly been uh, very passionate about about Libya, um, and uh, that's essentially some of the some of the some of the reflections that uh, that I heard the, the, com the commentary that was made to me. Uh, while I was posted in Libya, uh, basically drove the desire to write this book, because uh, a number of people came up to me in different. It was very surprising in different in different uh, contexts, whether they were taxi drivers, people who were um, uh, poised to make lots of money as commercial, you know, middlemen between the regime and and uh, the private sector, um, uh, former monarchy uh, people, people who had been parliamentarians back in the 60s under King Idris, and so said, look, you know, uh, we understand that there's this rapprochement going on, but you realize that if you don't, this is your time to pin the regime and uh, Colonel Gaddafi to the, to the wall. Uh, if you don't express what you, what you want from this and have a clear end goal, uh, things will not work out uh, well. And we're willing to say that even if we are poised to make a lot of money out of this. Now, this wasn't the view of everyone, of course, but um, these kinds of... Uh, uh, hushed uh, sort of warnings uh, resonated very very strongly with me, um, and I think are in some ways are are, are kind of uh, uh, explained or increasingly explained by what by what by some of the news that we're hearing uh, in in, in, ret in retrospect about what 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 actually went on during during some period of the Qaddafi regime. Um, so. You know the book. I think there are basically four four takeaways, uh, four main points that I try to make, and and um, one of them is, is very uh, sort of has been brought brought into um, uh, profile by the by the presidential de debate and and the whole issue of what happened in Benghazi on uh, on September 11th, uh, which is the what I call the the myth of, of of Libya's irrelevance to U.S. policy, and I think over the course of if you go go back to you know, this is a, Foundations of, of the Libyan state in 1951. Um, you know, the U.S. relations with Libya have been. Uh, uh, you know, li U.S. has always looked at Libya as something of a of a, of a strange creature that, that that we could use for certain uh, as a as a as a as, an, as a piece of a stra strategy that had to do with the region as a whole, but was never really looked at as a as an as, a, as an object. The, the relationship was never seen as a, as, a, as as an object in in, in and of itself. Um, you know, you could start off with the uh, relationship with the Soviets, uh, uh, the, the, the Eisenhower Doctrine in the United States' desire to, to push back Soviet influence. Libya was desperately pleading for, for U.S. attention back then, uh, for aid to get itself together, to be able to, uh, you know, to stand on its, uh, on its own feet. This is before the discovery of oil. 
Um, and the U.S. kind of took a, well, you know, you're really not as important as Egypt, for example, and, um, you know, we'll think about it. And the result was that the uh, prime minister at the time, uh, Ben Halim, you know, basically devised a plan to court the Soviets uh, and see if he could grab the United States' attention. And this, that, that happened. Um, uh, the, the next, you know, major event was the uh, Lib Libya's and Qaddafi's successful bid to change drastically the way that uh, oil pricing was, uh, was conducted by squeezing the independent oil companies, Occidental Petroleum uh, uh, for first and foremost, into changing the, the, the system whereby there would be a 50-50 a split uh, and you know basically controlling interests by by U.S. oil companies in in, in, in Libyan oil and that that the consequence of that has has uh, come through to through to this day uh, in terms of increasing the power of of uh, so the economic power of the Gulf states and Saudi Arabia in particular. Um, so Libya and and went fast forward to the Arab Spring. You know, Lib Lib I think a very important point is that Libya became a uh, sort of you know, Obama in 2000, President Obama in, 2000, in 2009 delivered his uh, uh, now famous, you know, uh, New Beginning speech in which he said that he was going to stand with uh, the Arab people uh, against tyranny and made a number of uh, very strong statements which he probably wasn't expecting to be called upon uh, so soon. Um, but, you know, uh, at the time you had uh, Syria was looking, uh, you know, as the, as the sequential Arab revolts came, came, came into uh, into being, there were very few places where the United States had a, an easy uh, or even a sort of a conceivable uh, uh, influence, edge to come in and do something where the consequences were not dramatic, or at least, you know, there could be a positive, you know, of course, Egypt was, you know, a longtime ally, anchor in the Middle East, supporting Israel. Um, Tunisia was a little bit, you know, by that point, it already kind of crossed the threshold and Ben Ali was out. Uh, Syria, the comparisons with, with Libya are quite, uh, 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 you know, it's very different. It's a, it's a multi-sectarian uh, society with lots and lots of, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's a connections to, to other, other powers, to which notably Iran, Lebanon, Israel, you know, uh, where disrupting or changing that relationship could have all sorts of uh, consequences which are unknown. Um, so uh, Libya presented a, uh, was unique in that the Libyans had, essentially there was a popular, popular uprising, there was a program that had been d uh, put forth by a small group of, of, of people who had put themselves forward as sort of uh, unofficial first unofficial, but then uh, increasingly official spokesman of the Libyan people. There was a program, which say doesn't exist in Syria at the moment. Um, and uh, this was an opportunity for, for, for essentially the region, for, for, for President Obama of the United States to make some good on, 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 on much of the content of the 2009 speech, um, which is very important. I think people are, 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 are potentially losing, losing, losing sight of that. Um, the second takeaway, I think, is the is the question of, of of intelligence and what we've known about about what's going on in Libya for the past 42 years, and it's remarkably little. Um, uh, you know, you, uh, this is, a, I think, also a, a symptom of, 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 in particular, countries that go into s the sanctions uh, uh, blackout because uh, once uh, you know. Uh, once that happens, you basically uh, institutionally lose uh, some knowledge, which uh, is not regenerated as time as time goes on. And I think that's uh, you know when 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 the situations change and there, there there needs to be some repository of knowledge upon which you can draw to figure out what's really going on. It's not there because uh, the place has been off the map for 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 quite some time. Um, and I think the that, that lack of, of of institutional knowledge complicated the U.S. response to what was going on, not only in Libya, but in, in, in other countries, uh, uh, Arab Spring countries. Um, the third interesting thing that I think is very interesting is, is the issue of, of uh, the rapprochement between U.S. and, and, and Libya being uh, actually the, 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 the straw that broke the camel's back, sorry for the, uh, for the uh, in this sense that, that uh, you know, Gaddafi made a series of agreements with the United States, which he thought was going to save his regime. And uh, there were a number of, of consequences of that, uh, of those decisions, both for the U.S. and for Libya, which did not 
uh, turn out exactly as he as he wanted. I'll, I'll go go into that in a little bit more detail uh, later. Um, but uh, you know, I date the, the 